gonna be a different year This is not the place for fear I've got a job to I do one day. How are you today, Frank? Good, you, Ruth? John? Dane? Dane gave me a thumbs up. Piper? How about you, Justina? What was that? You're a little sleepy, too. All right, well, um, today, uh, this week, guys, you can see up on the board, um, by looking at our weekly agenda, we're going to be um, tackling chapter 16 through chapter 22. So Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, we're actually going to be doing two chapters. All right, by now we know that these chapters are pretty short, so it's easy to, to put two in. So guys, I want to jump in right away today. I want to talk about um, chapter 14 and 15, and then we're going to start reading chapter 16. So can you guys put your eyes up here? Let's go over the, um, the do now. By now you guys should have all written the homework down. Jane, would you read the homework for tonight? Good. You always can say, just do your kid blog. Okay, get on there and do your question. Okay, so that's your homework tonight. Um, we're only doing one chapter today, so it's just one chapter today. This one's a little bit longer, um, and that's why we're going to double up on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Believe it or not, we will be done with the book, okay, a week from today. We'll be done with the book. And then, after we're done with the book, we're going to be looking at the movie, and we're going to be doing some comparing and contrasting between the two. So, um, believe it or not, John, we're getting there. We're almost there. Okay? All right, so let's scroll down. I want to begin by just asking you guys this. I want to do a quick reminder with you. Because we've been spending now probably about the last two weeks, um, and I've been asking you guys to ask questions. All right? So, John, you might be asking, why do we have to ask questions? Why ask questions? Piper, <clears throat> can you read what the board says about why do we ask questions? Or from your computer, it doesn't matter from where you read it. Read it really loud. Very good, what you read, good. <clears throat> so, what's the key word in here, or the key phrase? It's right here. Ruth, what is it? Critically thinking, all right? Critically thinking is what we wanna be able to do, and everything that we're doing, remember, in unit one, this is in our title for unit one. John, what is it? What did I just circle? Respond to literature, okay? So why are we asking questions? One, because it's making every one of you critically think, okay? We're not stopping at level one. We're not just caring about who, what, okay, what's in the text, but now we're asking, what do you think about the text, all right? And how can we connect to the text with asking our level three questions? So you guys are um, understanding the text much deeper than if we just was to ask what the text is about. So that's the, one of the main reasons, all right? Um, and what do we need to be responding to? Frank, that was my second question I put up here. What do we respond to? Because we're critically thinking, all right? And we're critically thinking in a way which makes it us better at responding to literature. So what's the goal, Frank? What do we want to respond to? And that's how these two things come together, all right? We respond to literature, and that's what Unit 1's all about. How do we respond to literature, okay? And then the other thing it's all about, Justina, is the literary elements, because this is what we should be responding to. We should be responding to the setting. We should be responding to characters, and it could be what we think about characters, what's happening to characters, what would we do if we were the characters, all right, about the plot, the events that are happening. All right, and we haven't done a ton with conflict yet, all right, but we're right in the middle of a big conflict that just started in last night's reading. 
And then these ones we haven't spoken about, but we will, theme, mood, and tone. These are all the literary elements, and these are the kinds of things that we should be responding to when we respond to literature. So guys, that's the purpose of everything that we've been doing over these last two weeks with asking and answering questions. Let's talk about the last chapter. I'm gonna start us off with level one questions, guys. So, you guys were to come in today having read chapters 14 and 15. So, raise your hand if you wanna answer this question. Same with the virtual people. All right, what were Groom and Graham fighting about? What were they fighting about? Ruth? All right, they were fighting about getting a gun. Who do you agree with, Grim or Graham? Who do you agree with, Justina? Grimm. Okay, first tell us. Grim, does he want to get the gun, or is he for the gun or against the gun? Yes, Grim wants to get the gun. Graham doesn't want to get the gun. You, who do you say you're with? Um, yeah. All right, why? Why do you think they should get the gun? Okay, remember, put us in the book. Use the literary elements, use the characters, use the setting. Self-defense from who? Killer Kane. Killer Kane, okay. See, put us in that book. All right, Jane, who are you with, Grim or Graham? You think they should get the gun or not get the gun? I think they should get the gun because um, they, they think they should use it as self-defense. Um, I think they're, um, they're both right. Like, Graham has the right to worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Right, but I think also Graham should get a gun. So I think they're both right. Okay, you make an argument for both. All right, anyone else? All right, that's a good spot to move on. Uh, so guys, this is a level one. This is a level one question. Who do you agree with, Grim or Grand? We're going into the book, okay? How do you feel about owning a gun? This is a level three. How do you guys feel about owning a gun? You don't have to answer if you're uncomfortable answering it, but how do you feel about owning a gun? Justina? I feel like it would help me with like self defense and also spending time with Okay. Alright, so it could be good for spending time with your dad and self defense. Ruth? It would be self defense against anybody. Okay. 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 All right. Where do you stand on gun ownership, Piper? I would feel okay because it's good for self defense and if you like to go hunting. Hunting. But, or you can just show somebody when they lose it. But my grandpa he has a key because he's a whole gun cabinet. Just guns. But I, it's up in his room, but I don't know. Okay. So sounds like you're also talking about responsible gun ownership, locking them up. And a safe with the key and all that. Frank, where do you stand on gun ownership? Uh, I like guns. Where do you stand on gun ownership? Uh, uh, I like guns is very different from where do you stand on gun ownership. Well, I think they're good because like, you can use them for self-defense. And like Ruth said, you can intimidate people. So like, you don't have to shoot them. Okay. All right. Um, last one. Um, the only online person I see with their hand up is Ariana. So I'll call it now Ariana again. I think it's perfectly fine. I mean, I have my, my, me myself, I have one. So I think it's perfectly fine. You can use it for fun. You can use it for fun. You'll do hunting. Okay. I think it's perfectly fine. All right. Good. Let's go on. My fourth question. What are they celebrating in Chapter 15, guys? What are they celebrating in Chapter 15? Jane? Christmas. Christmas. What does Max get Kevin? What does Max get Kevin? These are level ones again. Piper? Wait, wait, listen, listen. You're answering this one. What does Max get Kevin? What does Max get Kevin? Do you want me to come back to you for question six? Okay, what does Max get Kevin? Max gets Kevin tools. Yeah. It's a tool, it's kind of like a jackknife, and it's got screwdrivers and magnifying glasses, and you can you pull them out, it's like a multi-tool that he gets some. And what does Kevin get? Max Piper? He gets a, a dictionary, not just a dictionary, but he's doing words and alphabet. Very good, and with his own definitions in it, right? So instead of what the dictionary would say that it is, 
Um, it's what Kevin describes it as. Has, did anyone find the dictionary? Yeah, I did. It's in the back of the book. It's in the back of the book. So the dictionary, just in case you were wondering, it's in the back of the book, and you can read. And in the in the story, Kevin says you're gonna love what I did with disease. So on your own time, take a look to see what he did with disease. Um, all right, question seven: Who came down the chimney? Who came down the chimney? Ruth and came down the chimneys in quotes. Killer Kane. In came down the chimney. Who's supposed to come down the chimney? Santa. Santa. The name of the chapter is What Came Down the Chimney. So the chapter title is a reference to this. When Killer Kane, did he actually come down the chimney? No. no. What does Killer Kane do? He comes in and then he takes Max. So um, that's my level three question. Let's turn it over now to you guys, to your kid blog questions. We just covered the last two chapters. That's what happened. Now let's hear what you guys are thinking about. So. Who has their question that they want to share? And again, online, if you have your kid blog question and you want to share it, pull it up, raise your hand. All right, so far, the only person I'm really seeing active is Ariana. There's several people that don't have their cameras on, and one of the rules we had, guys, was um, cameras on, so that way we can kind of see that you're there. Um, um, and then if it's quiet where you are, you can unmute yourself, but if there's noise around you, just keep yourself muted. That makes me be able to see you. All right. And that way, Steven and Emma, if you guys wanted to participate, you just raise your hand, all right, and I can see that you want to answer. All right, so, um, Jane, you start us off with your um, question. Um, Read it really loud. Would you be scared if your dad was going on parole and he was killing me? Like, I'm very counting him. I would feel, oh, I would feel safe. Okay, speak really loud. Keep calling on people, Jane. It's a good question. I'm confused. I know what she said. I was confused on the question. Would you be scared if your dad was going to be on parole? Basically. If your dad was Killer Kane and you're Max, would you be scared? Do you remember, we talked about what parole is. Parole means he's going to get out of jail. He's going to be getting out of prison. So would you be scared if you were Max? Okay, keep calling people, Jane. I don't. Just Terrifies words I heard. Um, I mean, all right, let's go on. Let's get one more good question or two more. All right, from here. Piper, you have a good one? I have, I put down there two on mine. Well, read the one that you like the best. How would you feel if your dad could not come in a mile of your house? Explain. Okay. Piper calling someone else. Your job, hey, Piper, when you ask the question, you're the teacher. Jane, um, I would be, well, I would be scared because I don't know if he would be like, but I would also be a little bit scared. Okay. All right, we're going to do one more question. All right, who wants it? Someone here in the room or someone online? Parker, did I, I did. I think told you you could have a question. Do you do you want to ask your question, Parker? No, you don't want to. Frank, do you have a good question? Did you ask your question, Ruth? Why don't you ask your question? Read questions. Read it really, really loud. 
So Justina can hear us. Um, I'll raise my hand on this one too. I'd love it. Um, so there's something about handmade gifts which are awesome. Um, you know, a handmade gift might not always be as awesome as a store-bought gift that costs a lot of money, but you know, as someone who's made gifts, um, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of time, and that's something that you can't ever get back. So homemade gifts are sometimes the absolute best gifts. So, and this one is very personal from Freak, so I think it'll be an awesome gift. Frank, set his hand up, Ruth. Uh, well, I honestly probably like drop it and be like so amazed at the fact that someone could make that. And then I'd probably like, like just be it and Okay. All right. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I think now is a good time for us to. Move. So we've answered a lot of our own questions about the last two chapters. Let's move on um, to the next two chapters. And again, I'm kind of surprised. I'm going to ask my question here, guys, which was mine. And I really thought one of you would do it. Um, and no one did. This, one, this one's the obvious question to me. Uh, it's the obvious level two question. Look up at the board, Viper. My question eight, guys. Frank, had, Frank said it. These were Frank's words. He's being kidnapped. All right, whether we agree with Frank or not, we can debate that, but we know that his dad's come in to his bedroom in the Down Under, put his hand over his mouth, and told him to be quiet. Don't say a word, boy. I came back, just like I promised. And that's where the chapter ends. No one asked this question. Read it, John. Read it really loud. What do you think Max should do? What do you think Max should do right now? That's where I want to leave it, right here. You guys are going to answer this question before we read the next chapter. The question is, guys, what do you think Max should do right now? Right now, in that instant, he's in his bedroom. It's Christmas Eve. His dad has come in. His hand is over his mouth. And his dad says, don't say a word, boy. I came back just like I promised. What should Max do? Ruth, what should Max do? Try to get away. Kick and scream, she said. Try to wake somebody up so they can see it. All right, Justina. If I, I think if he had anything next to him, like on the stand or something, I would pick it up, I would pick it up, I would pick it up and drop it and move it loud. Not for some of the All right, um, raise your hand. So, Noah. Punch him in the throat and book it. Okay, he's... Yo, your answer is always book it. Um, punch him in the throat and book it seems to be Noah's default setting. All right. Remember, he's your dad. You're under the covers. He's on top of you. Hand over your mouth. Um, so who knows if you can get your hands free? Maybe. Piper. Noah, so violent. I would try. Okay. I'm not saying it's a bad idea, Noah. He's being kidnapped, according to Frank, so... If you're being kidnapped, I hope you do everything you could and you're mean all by all means to keep yourself safe. I would want you to fight, kick, and scream. I would try to look for a phone in the down under. I would try to look for a phone in the down under or like a phone in the down under and like try to run away and try to go find the phone call. Okay. Does anyone see problems in that? Yeah. What are the what are the problems with papers? John? What's the, what are the problems with Piper's recommendation? Well, even if you could run away and find the phone they're gonna, and call the cops, they're going to ask for the address, they're going to ask um, how old you are, if this is a prank call. Okay, you don't see any problems before that? <laughs> um, well, how is he going to be able to run away in the first problem? And then as soon as he gets to the phone, his dad will probably already be gone. 
or tackling him, right? Yeah. yeah, so there's a whole lot of problems before you even get on the phone with a 911 operator. Yeah. All right, okay. Um, give me one more person. What do you think Max should do right now? Um, Steven, I'm gonna call that a hand up. It looks like your hand is up. What should Max do? Um, I wouldn't really do anything because your dad's been in jail and people who are usually go to jail, they get strong. Okay, so you're saying I, I wouldn't fight back because if I fought back, I'm gonna get overpowered. Yeah. Okay, all right. So this is where Max is. Let's um, dive into the reading. We have ourselves a good 15 minutes to read. So let's take it on, chapter 16. I gave you guys a graphic organizer. It looks identical, except I made one small change. Who can see the change? What is the change? Jane? Um, Yes, added the right. question box. So now we don't have to wonder where we write questions. You could write one question, two questions, however many you can fit in that little box. Remember, your reading guides are for you to organize your thoughts about the literary elements and how they unfold in the chapter. All right, guys, so we're going to start reading right now. Chapter 16. All right. A chip off the old block. But I want to remind you about what happened on page 99. Remember, on page 99, this is Max saying, uh, his dad says, don't say a word, boy, he whispers, not a sound. I try to move, try to shrink myself back into the bed, but the hand follows me down. The hand is so hard and strong, I can't move, and it feels like my heart has stopped beating. It's waiting to see what will happen next. I came back. He says, like I promised. And that's where your last reading ended. So now, boom, we pick it up right in the middle of that moment with Max and his dad. All right, chapter 16, a chip off the old block. Ariana, do you have a question? No, I was just going to make a comment. That voice was creepy. <laughs> so I did a good job? I, uh... My reading was good? All right, chapter 16, a chip hey, off the old block. Sure. Got your graphic organizer out, Justina? Yeah. Okay. Um, and you can do it either digitally or you can use the paper copies. Once on the TV, this dude hypnotized a lobster. Maybe you saw it. He touches a lobster and it freezes. It can't move. That's sort of what happens to me when his hand clamps over my mouth. Like I'm paralyzed and my head is empty and all there is in the world is that big hand and this cool breath like the wind. So, this is where the geezers stuck you, huh? He whispers, down in the basement, out of sight, out of mind. I still can't see his face. He's this huge shape in the room. Everything changes now, he says. It's time I got to know my son, my own son, who had his mind poisoned against me. He makes me sit up and shushes me to make sure I won't make any noise. Making noise is the last thing I want to do because I don't know whether or not Grimm ever bought that gun he mentioned or what might happen to him if he tries to use it. Graham's bad dream about Grimm getting shot with his own gun seems pretty real right now and I don't want to be the one to make it come true. I know what they told you, he says. It's all a big lie, you understand? I never killed anybody, and that's the truth. So help me God. Okay, so this chapter, first of all, where and when are we? Let's start with this simple stuff, the setting. John? In the dining All right, and when? When is this? Late at night. But it's not just late at night. It's, this, is, this is Christmas Eve. This is Christmas Eve, John. Write it down. See, late at night's not as important as it's Christmas Eve. Late at night on Christmas Eve, and we're in the Down Under. So, what just happened? What is happening at the start of the chapter? Ruth? Um, but what is he telling Max? 
Very good. This is big. This is something you guys need to write down. Max's dad is telling him, I know what they told you. It's all a big lie. You understand? I never killed anybody. And that's the truth. So help me God. So Frank says he's kidnapping him. And now we all of a sudden we see, because it definitely looked like he was kidnapping him. But now in chapter 16, he's saying, it was all a lie. I never did it. I never killed anybody. And that's the truth. So help me God. So a question we could ask ourselves is, should we believe him? All right. Hopefully, you guys, um, should we believe his dad or should we believe Max? What do you think? I think we should believe Max because, you know, the killers can lie just to get away with things. Okay. Actually, I shouldn't say believe Max. Um, should we believe Killer Kane or should we believe everybody else who says his dad was a killer? I don't know. Ruth, what do you think? He is. He, he swears to God that he didn't kill anybody. And he's, I mean, he could have been friends. Because people like that in the world have friends. Let's find out. <clears throat> By now I'm sitting up on the bed and he's making me put on my clothes. And the weird thing is, none of this is a surprise. Somehow I always knew this would happen. That he would come for me in the night. That I would wake up to find him there, filling the room, and that I'd feel empty. I'm so weak, I can hardly put my shoes on. Like when you wake up and your arm is still asleep, and you can hardly make it move. That's what I feel like all over. Numb and prickly, and as light as a balloon. Like my hands might float up in the air if I let them. This'll be an adventure, he says. You're gonna have the time of your life, boy, okay? We're leaving. And not a peep out of you. The bulkhead door is open, and you can see the stars. Some people think the stars look close enough to touch, but Freak says the sky is like a photograph from a billion years ago. It's just some old movie. They're showing up there, and lots of those stars have switched off by now. They're already dead, and what we're seeing is the rerun, which makes sense if you think about it. Someday, the rerun will come to an end. And you'll see all the stars start to flick off, like a billion little flames blown out by the wind. This way, he says, quiet as a mouse. Now, is Max um, going with his dad willingly or is he resisting? He's going pretty willingly. He's like, well, I gotta put my shoes on. His dad's just telling him, be quiet. So Max is going with his father. Um, his father's not having to fight with Max to get him to go with him. There's snow on the ground, not a lot enough to cover the ground. I can tell how cold the air is, but I can't feel it, even without a jacket, which I didn't even have time to put on. The cold doesn't matter, nothing does. Really not Grim and Graham, or the old stars in the sky, or Freak and the fair Gwen. They're all just make-believe. This dream I was having for a long time, and now I'm awake again and he's still filling the room somehow, even though we're outside. The lights are out at Freak's house, and I'm thinking, the stars clicked off, and I don't even know why I'm thinking that. It's like a dead voice in my head or something. How is Max feeling? How does he describe the way he's feeling during this time that his dad is taking him? Ariana. Oh, terrified. Okay, that's not the word I was thinking of, but sure. Terrified would work. We'll say it again. Numb. Numb. Max says he's feeling numb. He doesn't feel the cold. He doesn't feel being scared. He's, he's feeling completely numb at this moment. Um, numb is this symptom of like great trauma when something happens. People will talk about, I, I felt nothing. I, I felt like I was, my head was in a daze and they have a hard time. Max feels numb. And if you've had a great tragedy in your life, you might understand what this feeling is in this moment where he's so terrified. That it's just completely trauma to him what's happening. And he just kind of, his protection, go numb. We're under a street light when he says, let me look at you. 
He's got these big eyebrows that make it hard to see his eyes. And that's fine. I don't want to see them. Looking at those eyes is asking to have a bad dream. My, my, he says, checking me out. Will you look at this? It's like I'm looking at an old picture of myself. You really are a chip off the old block. You know that? What's that mean? Max looks just like his dad. Max's dad looks at him and he's like, man, you really are a chip off the old block. Remember, he hasn't seen him since he was six years old. And now he's seeing him as a like, young man. He's 13. And he sees him. He's like, wow, you really you're, look just like me. Um, I don't say anything. And he reaches out and touches my face real gentle, as if he'd never heard a fly. I say, boy, do you know what? Answer me now. Yes, sir. I say, everybody says so. Christmas Eve, he says. You know how many Christmas Eves I've been deprived of my own blood kin? Now, is that fair to do that to a man? Lock him up for a crime he never did? He's waiting for me to answer, and I say, No, sir, not fair. That's over and done now, he says. We're starting fresh. Parker, Just you and me, boy. Now. That's how it was meant to be. I'm standing there under the streetlight, and it's amazing how quiet it is. Like everybody went away or died. The quiet is almost as big as he is. He's as tall as me, only wider everywhere. And for some reason, maybe because we're not far from Freak's house, I'm thinking this weird thought. He doesn't need a suit of armor. No, and he doesn't need a horse or a lance or a pledge to the king or the love of a fair lady. He doesn't need anything except what he is. He's everything all rolled into one. And no one can ever beat him, not even the brave Lancelot. He's squinting around. His eyebrows are furrowed, shadows. And he says, you know what I think of when I see a neighborhood like this? Hamsters is what I think. That's how these people live, like hamsters in cages. They have their little wheels to run on, and that's what they do for the whole of their lives. They run and they get nowhere. They just spin. I stand there. They poisoned you against me. I know that, he says. Give it time. You'll see the truth. So what does his father keep telling Max? He keeps drilling this into Max. Jane? Um, that they poisoned him against him. That so, so, again, at the heart of that is... He didn't do it. He didn't do it. They're poisoning your mind. I didn't do it. This is the message that keeps coming up. Max's father, throughout this entire four, first four or five pages, keeps telling him, I didn't do it. They're just poisoning your mind against me. I didn't do it. That's what he keeps telling him. And he keeps telling him, this is a fresh start. Just you and me, okay? Let's keep reading for another, uh, we got another three or four minutes. Hmm... Where did I leave off? He starts walking fast and I walk with him. Like my feet already know where to go. We're cutting through the side streets and heading down to the pond, all cold and white and frozen. Where do you think they're going? Justina? To the tenements? Tomorrow morning, a bunch of kids will take their new sleds and skates out there and probably lose their new mittens and scarves and get yelled at by their moms and dads. But tonight, the pond is as empty as the moon, as empty as my head. Once a car goes by real slow around the pond, and I've got this strange feeling there's no one at the wheel. He hooks his finger into my shirt collar and makes me duck down until the car goes by. The car passes, and you can't see through the dark windows and you can hear the snow crunching under the tires, squeaky and frozen. We're invisible, he says, making me stand up. Now, now, isn't that a kick in the pants? My feet already know where we're going, the New Testaments. There's a few lights on in the old buildings, and you can see some of the windows are cracked, and it looks like a knife cut out against the light, and he's saying, you know about Mary and Joseph, how they sought shelter in Bethlehem, and how the baby Jesus was born in a manger? 
I try to nod and the funny thing is, even though I'm not cold, my teeth are chattering. So it's like the rest of me is freezing, but my head hasn't noticed. That's what we're doing, seeking shelter, he says. Except this isn't exactly a manger we're going to. No, sir, I say, it sure isn't. All right, and that, I think, for time, leaves you guys about two and a half pages to finish reading on your own for chapter 16. Okay, so Justina was right. Where are they going, guys? She's the only one that wants to shout it out now. Where are they going, Frank? So, here's a question. Who do you think they might be going to see if they're going to the tenements, Jane? Maybe, maybe Iggy and Loretta. Um, here's a question I have right now. Can you imagine this being your Christmas Eve? This is his Christmas Eve. My God. This is his Christmas Eve. And just imagine this is your Christmas Eve. Could you imagine? Yeah. Now, again, perhaps this could be horrible because he's being kidnapped. But maybe everything his dad is saying is true, and maybe his dad wants a fresh start with him. We have to put both of those options on the table. We don't know what his dad's intentions are, all right? We can try to take all of the evidence and make inferences and then decide which side of the fence we fall on. So, hence, hence, some good questions might be about whether or not we believe his dad. Should we believe what his dad is saying, or should we believe what everybody else has been saying about Max's dad, all right? That's kind of where my head goes, and my head also goes, and you imagine this being your Christmas Eve. All right, you guys, so you guys know what your task is. Finish the chapter, okay? Do your quiz and post your questions. All right, I'll see some of you guys tomorrow.